Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars. Welcome to my YouTube guitar building channel. For those of you who are wondering where things stand as far as plans for my CNC pickup winder, stay tuned and I'll get you caught up. If you enjoy the videos that I post on building guitars and would like to show some support, head over to eGuitarPlans.com and purchase a plan for either a guitar or one of the different tools that you can use to build guitars. And if you'd like something more tangible, you can always purchase a Highland Guitars t-shirt. Those are displayed in the merch shelf down below. Either way, links are in the description and your support is greatly appreciated. Now let's get on with the video. It's been about a year since I produced a five-part series for my YouTube channel where I talked about how I designed and built this winder. And in those videos, I had talked about how, the fact that my goal was to have a, uh, an assembly manual as well as a user manual that you could use to build and use this uh, CNC winder. I also was going to make available a link to download the software that I created that writes the G code which operates the CNC winder. And I had pretty much everything done about a year ago, but I wanted to do some testing and make sure that everything was working the way I wanted it to. Well, as it turned out, I ended up getting involved in some other guitar building projects, which were uh, extremely time consuming. And as a result, I had to put testing the winder kind of on the back burner. So, instead of getting all the testing done in a short period of time, I was doing a little bit of testing here and there as I had time to do it. And one of the things I learned in the testing was that there was a couple of little things that I wanted to revise with respect to this winder. Uh, not only with the mechanical design, but also on the software side of things. So I've recently revisited this winder and I've been making some adjustments to the mechanical design as well as the software design and I am very nearly ready to release the uh, the assembly manual, the uh, user manual as well as the software. However, I still need to do a little bit of testing to make sure that those revisions that I made are actually going to work well and hopefully I'll have all that material ready for sale on my eGuitar Plans site this summer, summer of 2022. I'm not going to peg a date for that because I'm a lone wolf. I'm, I'm working here at Highline Guitars by myself and I can sometimes have to uh, change hats quite a bit. You know, I can go from building guitars to designing guitars to marketing guitars. And so as a result, I sometimes have to uh, put things on the back burner and hopefully I can get back to them in a reasonable time frame. And that's why I can't be really specific about the time, but I'm hoping for this summer. Everything is almost done. I just want to be comfortable knowing that everything is going to work really well. So let me uh, kind of bring you in a little bit closer and I'll explain w where some of these changes are happening so that you can kind of get an idea of what I'm dealing with. Over the past year, I've done quite a bit of testing with this winder and I have wound hundreds of pickups. In fact, I shudder to think how much wire I burned through. Most were tests and some were actually used in guitars, but I wound everything from humbucker bobbins to uh, strat style single coils, tele style single coils, and I've even done uh, bass pickups like this uh, precision bass humbucker bobbin that I've done. And in the process of doing this, I found that I had to make some adjustments to the design from what I originally had in the last part five video that I did on this winder. And in fact, I have what I like to call my little plastic tub of failure. <laughs> These are all the different uh, designs that I came up with for mainly the wire guide and traversing mechanism that I was testing on this winder. And I ran into a lot of issues along the way. It seemed like I'd lay in bed at night and I'd come up with these ideas for a new traversing mechanism. So the next day I'd get up and I'd make it 
and then I'd test it out. And sometimes they would kind of work, but for the most part, they didn't. And then after doing a lot of research, I came up with this design that uses these incredibly small V wheels. And it works great because it doesn't break the fine coil wire. Then as far as the tensioning was concerned, originally I was using two felt pads that would press together against the wire to uh, put it under tension. The problem with that is it really only works effectively on a bobbin that's round. Well, of course, no pickup bobbin is round. They're all kind of oblong. So as the bobbin is spinning, the tension changes at different points along that inner core. You tend to have more tension at the edges or at the ends than you do at the center. So I decided to try out one of these uh, Chinese made magnetic tensioning wire devices. And this thing works fantastic. It, it lays the wire down with very consistent tension all the way around. The only drawback to it is, is it's, it's fairly uh, finicky as far as getting it set up and adjusted right. But once you get it adjusted for the wire gauge that you're using, you can pretty much just run it and not have to worry about it. And you'll always get that consistent coil tension. So, um, you know, I had to do a little bit of testing work with this. I had to do some testing work with this. And then the other issue I had was the manner that I am attaching the um, bobbin to the bobbin plate. Uh, originally, I was using double-sided sticky tape to attach the bobbin. And the problem with that, there's actually two problems. First of all, as the coil builds up on the bobbin, it gets heavier. And there's a, a potential for that bobbin when it's spinning at high speed to come flying off the bobbin plate. So to kind of rectify that, I added a, this is a mini lathe live center. And I can move this uh, center, which is a, it's, uh, mounted in ball bearings so it spins easily. I can move it in and out and basically the way it works is I can take my bobbin here and I'm using a telecast because it has a hole in the center so it automatically centers on it. And then I just simply bring it up to the plate and then I can lock it down and the bobbin isn't going to go anywhere. It's not going to come flying off the plate. So that solved that issue. The other problem I was having is attaching the back of the bobbin to the plate itself. And as I said, I was using double-sided sticky tape. But the problem is that some of the bobbins that I'm using have slugs already installed. And those slugs extend out uh, both sides of the, the bobbin. So I can't really put double-sided sticky tape on there. It's not going to work. So what I've come up with is it's just a simple plate that installs onto the back before I mount the bobbin onto the bobbin plate. And that seems to work really well. Now, another issue I had with mounting is with respect to mounting the bobbin itself directly to the plate. As I said, I was using the double-sided sticky tape. And the problem is, is when I'm spinning at high speeds, as that bobbin gets heavy with the coil, it can tend to actually shift on that plate. It will turn, even with double-sided sticky tape. And plus there's the, the issue of having to put the tape on the bobbin and then peel it off. It can be a bit of a, a chore to do. So I was looking for a what I hope will be a simpler a more effective way of attaching the bobbin to the bobbin plate. And what I'm using is, this is a sticky silicone. And it's, this is what it looks like in the package. This is the stuff that you can buy online. And it's designed to be, you throw it on your dashboard of your car and then you can attach your cell phone to it. it. It will stick to it without falling off and it doesn't leave any residue. So I cut a piece of it to fit on here and that's kind of what I'm testing right now to see if this will be a great way to um, mount the bobbin, keep it in place 
and uh, it's the type of thing that can be reusable for a long period of time before having to be replaced. But you know, we'll see how that works out. So, from the mechanical side, that's basically the changes that I've made. Now, on the software side of things, I'm not going to get into a whole lot of detail here, except to say that I have the software completely written and it works pretty well. However, I've decided after being away from this project for a while and then coming back to it, I'm thinking about simplifying it. Uh, the way it works now is you enter the dimensions of your bobbins core. Then you can enter a target resistance that you want that coil, that, that bobbin, to uh, read at once it's been wound. Then you can select your wire gauge, and then you click calculate, and that tells you approximately how many turns you need to put on that bobbin. So that's the number you would input into the counter on the winder itself. Or you could just enter a desired turn count in this field here. Then you would tell it what the winder's uh, speed is. Uh, typically, I'm winding at 1200 RPM, so I'd enter 1200. Then you click calculate, and it'll tell you how many minutes it's going to take to wind the coil. Then on this tab here, you can select either clockwise or counterclockwise winding pattern, and you can do either no scatter, minimum scatter, moderate scatter, or maximum scatter for, for either the clockwise or the counterclockwise. Now, all that worked pretty well. However, one of the things that I've discovered in my tests was I would enter a target resistance, uh, say, for example, 5,000 ohms, and I would select like 43 gauge wire and then click to calculate the turn count, and it would tell me, you know, roughly 5,500 to 6,000 turns of coil, depending on the, the coil that I'm actually winding, the size of it. So I would input that into my winder's counter and the winder speed, and then I would select, you know, either one of my scatter patterns, or no scatter, and I would wind the pickup. And when I was done, I would test the actual resistance. And remember, I said I was shooting for 5,000 ohms of resistance. Well, when I tested, it could range anywhere from 4,500 ohms to 5,500 ohms. So it's not super accurate. And the reason for that has to do with a concept known as fill factor. Because as the bobbin is winding, the coil is actually getting bigger. So the length of wire from um, the start, the very first turn, to the very last turn gets longer. And that can be by as much as a half an inch. And while that may not seem like a lot, when you consider that it's going to take many, many turns to go from one side of the bobbin to the other to create a layer, that half inch every single turn, uh, it increases. And while there are formulas to calculate fill factor, most of those formulas are geared towards a round bobbin, not an oblong bobbin. Uh, you can't do it, as far as I can tell. I haven't been able to figure out a way to do it. And I tried different methods for fudging it in the software. Uh, as you can see here, I've written the program in Python. And I could get close but not close enough. And the thing is, when talking with a lot of other pickup makers, they tend to rarely use resistance as a measure of anything with regards to pickups. The only thing I ever really use resistance for is to make sure that the coil is viable. I don't really use it for anything else. So I'm thinking about deleting that whole section from the software. So all you would do is input what you want for your turn count. And the only thing that's going to do is uh, when you click the um, calculate winding time is it'll tell you how many minutes it's going to take. It'll also be used to help determine the length of the G code that's going to be written when you select one of these patterns. So, but as far as determining the resistance, I'm just not convinced that that's the right way to go. And I think a lot of pickup makers out there will, will agree with me on that uh, subject. What that means though, for the novice who doesn't know what they're going to get, you're going to have to do a little research to find out how many turns of wire you need to put on your bobbin to get a specific uh, output. So, you know, and there are ways to do that. And in the future, I may explain that uh, to, to in more detail so that you can understand what kind of turn count you should select when making different kinds of pickups. All right, so that's where things stand with the CNC pickup winder at the moment. Like I said, I'm shooting to have an assembly manual, a user manual, and the software ready for purchase and download. 
uh, probably sometime this summer. And I still want to do some more tweaking and playing around before I'm ready to have it done. But one thing I want to stress, and this is really important for those of you who are kind of intrigued by this, this is basically like a science project. It works. Don't get me wrong, it definitely works. But you're gonna find you have to kind of play around with a few things. And you know, there's a lot of adjustments that can be made on this tensioner. And you're gonna have to understand the basic concepts of how the traverse works. And you may have to play around with it a little bit to get it to function exactly right. But once you get it right and, and understand how it works, you'll be amazed at how simple it is to work. You know, it's to the point where all you have to do is stick a bobbin on there, feed the wire into it, and then send the G-code and go back to doing something else. And then four or five minutes, you've got a finished bobbin and it's gonna be perfect. So, you know, uh, just be aware of that. And uh, it's the same is also true with the software. The software is working pretty well and it writes the G-code uh, exactly the way I wanted it to, which controls the traverse and allows you to kind of um, vary your different uh, scatter patterns so that you can get different effects and you can test those out and see you know how they sound in your guitars but like i said it's basically a science project i'm not going to guarantee that this machine is going to run perfect as soon as you put it together you're going to have to do some testing and some experimentation and at that point i think you'll find it's um, it's a lot of fun to use and a lot of fun to play with and i'm hoping that maybe uh, we can create like a community of people who use this machine to share ideas and to do some testing experimentation and, and stuff like that. I may even uh, make the code available um, so people can kind of play around with that and, and maybe some folks out there will write their own software to run this machine. And you know, that's the whole beauty of this DIY maker movement. It's kind of uh, anything goes. So uh, I hope that that will uh, answer some of your questions about where this winder stands and when it's gonna be available. It will be available. It's just gonna take a little bit of extra time for me to dial in everything and get it, get everything put together and uploaded and ready for purchase. So look for it sometime during the summer, you know, July, August of 2022. And, you know, we'll see, we'll see if it, it can actually happen. And if there's any issues that, that come up between now and then, I'll be sure to post uh, updates here on my YouTube channel because I don't want people waiting around and I certainly don't want people to keep emailing me over and over and over asking where it is because I'm getting a lot of those emails right now and that's the reason why I posted this video. I want to be able to answer those emails by simply providing a link to this video. So hopefully you found this video to be useful and as always give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you got any comments or questions post them down below and until the next episode take care stay safe and I'll see you soon.